So in this video, I'm going to give a full in-depth review of this workbook that I've written called The Daily Workout. This is book one and it lasts from July to October in year one. So it is gonna be a long video, but I want to explain very clearly why I've put this together, I suppose how I've put it together, and also my thoughts behind it. So if you're a teacher watching this, this is gonna explain my thinking. If you're a student, then you can see why I think that this is a really good thing that you could use to help improve your understanding of A-level physics and ultimately your confidence going into the exams. So I came up with the idea thinking that um, if you were to maybe uh, do some training for a sporting activity or a sporting event, you wouldn't just go to the gym for one day and see a massive improvement. Instead, if you were to go to the gym, perhaps every day or have a good schedule where you stick to it over a month, you might start to see some small improvements. But if you stuck to that same training plan, not over months, but over a couple of years, think what you could achieve. And that's the idea with this book. Rather than just blasting all of your revision just before your exams, if you were to do a small amount of physics every single day, and it might only be five minutes a day, which maybe is about half an hour per week, so an extra 26 hours a year, I think that's something which is achievable, but the result of you doing that 26 hours of focused A-level physics could dramatically improve the way that you approach exam questions in the future, and ultimately, how much you enjoy the subject. So the way I did it was I wrote a load of questions myself, and then I got some other teachers who are heads of physics, heads of science, and they've got a massive amount of experience, and I went out to a load of teachers, and that some of them, uh, gave me hundreds of questions which I've used for this and other books. But then with those questions, I had another physics graduate work with me and we put together the kind of skeleton part of this book, which actually took a lot longer than I thought. And then I spent about a month every day editing these questions, writing my own, taking some out, putting more in. And ultimately what I have now is all of those questions in one workbook that you can basically own, you can use it every single day, you can write in. I've got a few extra special features which I don't think any other books out there do. Now this book, book one, is for the first four months and that's going from July to October. And I know that your A-level physics tend to kind of start in September. So this book can be used before you start your A-level physics. So when you finished your GCSEs, there are questions from July onwards. And a lot of the questions in July are designed to reinforce uh, and actually revise some of the stuff you've already done for GCSE physics, as well as introduce some of the ways that we do things in A-level physics. So by the time you get to that first lesson in September, you're gonna be much more confident and have a much easier transition to A-levels. Now, some of you might not be getting this book, maybe until you started your A-levels, in which case you can easily go back and over a weekend or a couple of weekends, you can easily do all the questions from July and August so you catch up to where you need to be. Uh, in the book itself, um, again, there's a, a page which has the other books I'm going to be doing, including book two, three, four, five, and six. So for every single day of A-levels, right up until your exam period in year 13, there will be questions you can have a go at. Um, these are the people who've helped me out. You can see that in the acknowledgements. Some amazing teachers who are really super enthusiastic about trying to do as much as they can to help students. Um, and then inside it, like always, I have a QR code and a link to my website, which is alevelphysicsonline.com. And on this page, there's going to be support for when you've got the book to actually see how to use it. So if you've got the book and you're working independently, there's always going to be video support and guidance from me as I explain how this book works. I then have a place for some data and formula, uh, resistors in parallel. There's some questions about that in the book and not everybody has been taught the formula at GCSE, so that's why I put it there. We're gonna use G as 9.81 newtons per kilogram, uh, not just 9.8 or 10. So that's the value we use at A-level. And then I've just got the mass of an electron. And what you can do is as you find things in the book, you can write them here so they're easily accessible. So that's the data and this thing. And then um, we start in July, there's a bit of an introduction to the month. And then what I have is a page with my worked examples showing the way that I think you should be filling in this book. So basic stuff make sure you write down the equation, you then put in some numbers, making sure you've converted into standard SI units, so kilograms, meters, and seconds, and then I'll give my answer to an appropriate number of significant figures, which in this case, the way I do it throughout the book, is the least number of significant figures in the question. And then I've given my units and standard form is useful. So 
all the stuff that if you're a year 12 or year 13 student, you know that this is what you should be doing. Also, if you can, draw a diagram. They just have to be rough, simple diagrams, but that really helps you as you explain the answer. And then, as I go into the book, uh, there's a little bit of scaffolding for the first couple of pages. Um, and a lot of the stuff in July, like I've said, is going to be based on the knowledge you currently have from GCSE Science and also GCSE Maths. And then I start to introduce new stuff throughout the, throughout the book. Um, there's also a bit at the top for you to record your progress, so you can tick off when you've marked your work if you've got them correct, so like questions one, two and three. And these are on every single page. And that means if there's a question that you can't do, you can just highlight the box so you can do a circle around it. And that means at the end of the month, you can maybe go back and have a go at any questions you couldn't quite complete at the time. And you'll see here, I just have questions and questions and questions. Now, some of them are very, very simple questions. So write the following numbers in standard form. This is something that you will have been able to do for several years, but every number here has a meaning. So it's designed to get you used to things like 8.99 times 10 to the 9 or whatever that number might be. The, all of these numbers here are also physical quantities or things which you're going to see referred to in many, many physics problems over the coming years. Um, what's the ratio between side O and H and what's the value of sine theta? Why do we have sine theta and what's the relevance to this triangle here? So um, as we go through the thing, uh, write down the charging coulombs of an electron, a neutron and a proton. So this one over here, um, this is kind of maybe introducing the A-level content. So although we might talk about uh, an electron as having a charge of negative 1, actually the charge is negative 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19. And even if you haven't been taught that at A-level just yet, you can still approach questions like that. So um, you'll see that every day there are questions, there's rearranging formulas, there's uh, calculating the mean, there's doing quite a lot of stuff with triangles and scale drawing. Um, it's all simple stuff, but it's the things which if you just spend a couple of minutes every day doing this, it's going to really help your confidence and really deepen your understanding across all bits of physics. Um, as we go towards the end of the month, I have a review. So this is my review for July. So um, again, you can just tick off where you think you're at the moment in terms of your uh, red, amber, green. So are you confident in a green or is it something you're not quite sure about on red? Can you use standard form? Can you give an answer to an appropriate and significant figures? All of this stuff here, that is stuff which I've given you questions about in the previous month. So hopefully this means that you realize how much you've actually achieved over that last month. And then um, it's the same in August. Again, in August, I link to some of the introductory videos that I did for A-Level Physics. So if you're about to start A-Level, you can watch these videos. Um, and again, that's going to explain what's coming up and also give you plenty of resources that you can use to revise the GCSE content that you're going to be relying on in Year 12. Um, we're completing some tip-to-tail vector diagrams. Now, what I've tried to do, and I've, I've thought about every single question and where it goes in the book and how that's progressive, um, maybe I'll just go forward to some of the other questions. Um, there's stuff here which you might think is quite simple about looking at the angles in triangles, but this is useful because it's just stuff that you're going to be relying on every single day when it comes to A-level. And I've got a series of questions um, down here. Yeah, so for example, we start out with a simple question where if you know the angle A, what's the value of theta? Very simple, straightforward stuff. A year nine student could do that. But over the weeks, we kind of take this idea, we're building it up day by day, until eventually what you can do is start to resolve the weight of an object on a slope into its parallel and perpendicular components. Something that you can do right at the start of A-level physics, and this is based on your current knowledge about GCSE math. So the idea is, it's going to be plenty of questions here that I will help you sort of scaffold you uh, and I suppose structure your approach. So by the time you do this in school again, it will all make sense. Um, I also have some questions as we go into October about um, these scales here. So you might be using different measuring instruments to measure very small diameters or very small dimensions. And I've got loads of questions about the vernier scale. Okay, and the idea with these is that by giving you these questions to have a go at. Um, some of them might seem quite difficult to begin with, 
but over time they will start to make sense and by the time you actually use these devices in the real physics lab you'll know how to read a vernier scale if that's a caliper or later on if it's uh, a micrometer so i do have plenty of questions throughout the book for you to have a go at okay um i suppose the other thing is that uh, in the back of the book i have answers um and these answers here are just simple numerical values and brief explanations. So as you're doing the work in the book, you can easily mark your work and check that you're making good progress. Sometimes, however, um, it is a bit difficult at A-level, a bit more challenging than GCSE. So on the website over A-level Physics Online to support this book, I also have work solutions that you can download. So you can see my handwritten notes of how I approach similar questions in the future. You can also uh, find video support because that's what I do. I do make videos about A-level physics and I'll be doing video solutions to all of the questions in the book as well. So if there's something you're stuck on, you can see me as a qualified teacher explaining how I'd approach similar questions like that in the future. So this is uh, the daily workout. This one here is book one, which is the first four months of the course. Um, I think it's about the right kind of thickness. If I had six months of questions in, the book would just be too thick. And I'm going to be doing books two, three, four, five, and six, which are going to take you the whole way through A-level physics. And if you like a copy, it's very simple. Uh, you can just download, so you can just order one of these on Amazon. Um, if you've got Amazon Prime, then often you get it delivered a couple of days later. Um, and if you're a school, then you can obviously order many copies of these if you want to get them for all of the students uh, in your class. Or as an individual, you can just buy it and it'll get sent straight to your house a couple of days later. So that is book one, A-level physics, uh, the daily workout. The idea being that you can do a very small amount of work every single day. A lot of it's going to be quite straightforward, quite easy. But if you keep doing that day after day after day, you're really, really going to improve your confidence with A-level physics and ultimately your ability to go into an exam hall at the end of year 13 and answer physics questions correctly. So that is the daily workout, book one.